Allow me to introduce myself. I am the last sane sports fan. Uh, I am a genius by trade. and welcome once again to The View from the Midwest. No real big topics are going on today, so let's just kind of go around the sports world. And let's do it. First off, the uh, U.S. Open started yesterday and uh, couldn't have gone much worse for Tiger Woods than it did as he finished uh, just about eight under and he's gone even worse today. Uh, it's, it's really kind of a sad scene right now to see one of the best in the world fall as far as he has. I mean, he's playing right now, he's hitting shots that an amateur playing on their home course could probably do better than, if not better than, at least on par with. I mean, he's spraying drives off into the into the woods, off into the the high grass in in this case, and it's just extremely sad to see. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, maybe he deserves that after the indiscretions that he had against his former wife and. Uh, the, the kind of things that he did to his family in that kind of instance, not thinking of them, only thinking of himself. That may be, and I'm not going to sit here and argue against anybody who may feel that way, but from a pure golfing standpoint, golf is more interesting when Tiger Woods is playing and when he is playing well. Uh, and unfortunately, we may never see that again. Golf is one of those sports where it's completely mental. You can have the smoothest stroke in the world, but if you don't have it up here, then you may never get it back physically. And right now, I think that's Tiger Woods' problem. I, I agree with Greg Norman. He, he had an interview on Fox Sports the other day, and uh, basically he said... He thinks that Tiger Woods needs to play in some of these smaller tournaments, some of these uh, things where it's uh, some of those tournaments where you're going to shoot 14 under, 15 under, 20 under, something like that. Maybe he won't shoot that, but you have to start building your confidence. You can't just play practice rounds and hope to play in a major. Uh, even some of these other tournaments that he's played in, they're not well known, but they're still fairly high ranking tournaments in the golf world. And to sit there and think that you're only going to play those and then play majors and really get your game back to where you want to, it's just not going to happen. Unfortunately for him, that's not how golf works. Uh, he keeps tinkering with his game, and I understand that that's been his motto throughout his career. But I think that somebody needs to get in his ear. Somebody needs to help him out in terms of just go back to what got you there. Go back to the things that made you that consummate professional, that professional that everybody feared. Maybe it'll never happen, but it would be extremely sad to see one of the greatest golfers of all time just go out on a pure nosedive. Next topic we want to talk about is uh, some of the NHL rumors going on right now. It really just goes to show, and I, I'm not... I'm not speaking to any of my viewers because I believe that uh, the people that have commented to me at least are, are rational people with uh, a decent amount of intelligence. Some of these people that you see on message boards, though, just just drive me insane. Of all people, simply because he had a bad series against the Chicago Blackhawks, who are one of the better defensive teams in the league, uh, and they had a hot goaltender, Corey Crawford. I don't care what you say. I don't think he is a good goaltender overall. But he somehow turns it on in the playoffs. He's like Chris Osgood. Chris Osgood was uh, a mediocre, too satisfactory regular season goaltender. Playoffs came around, and all of a sudden he was a world beater. That is Corey Crawford to me. Regular season, he's serviceable enough to get you the wins that you need to as long as you have a team like the Chicago Blackhawks do to where they're going to score quite a few goals and prevent some with blocked shots. In the playoffs, he turns it up. That being said, Steven Stamkos did not score against the Chicago Blackhawks in the NHL Finals. And now all of a sudden you have people saying, well, the Tampa Bay Lightning need to get rid of him. This is a, a young player. The kid is still in his 20s. It's not as though he's fully hit his peak. It's not as though he's over the hill. He's not even 30 yet. 
and he's still one of the best goal scorers in all of the NHL. You don't get rid of talent like that just because he had one bad series. Now, in the St. Louis Blues case, as I often bring these things back to St. Louis, they have a more they have more of a reason where they might want to look into getting rid of some of their quote unquote top line players simply because they've had several years of playoff experience now to where they haven't performed up to expectations. Steven Stamkos uh, has just now made the finals for the first time. He's only been in the playoffs a couple times before that. And all of a sudden, he has one bad series against one of the best teams that we have seen in the NHL, if not for the past few years, for the past few decades. And you want to sit there and say, wow, we're, we need to get rid of him. He didn't score any goals. He's not a big-time player. You've got to be kidding me. People like that need to have their mind lobotomized because, quite frankly, there's no way that they can be any kind of uh, benefit to society if they don't have any kind of rational thought when it comes to people's sporting performance. Last thing I want to touch on real quick is the St. Louis Cardinals still with the best record in the major leagues. Can you believe it? Even with all this turmoil going on. However, since that has come out, they did drop a couple games in heartbreaking fashion to the Minnesota Twins, but they split the overall series. They played two games here in St. Louis, won those, played two in Minnesota, lost those. Uh, lost it in uh, kind of a bad fashion. Jaime Garcia pitched an excellent game yesterday. Left in, uh, I believe it was the seventh inning, maybe the eighth. Uh, they blew it in the eighth with a home run, then all of a sudden a game-winning home run in the ninth, and it wasn't a good uh, uh, bullpen day for the St. Louis Cardinals. But I still have to figure that that's got to eat away at these people, that they, St. Louis Cardinals can come away. It's like the New England Patriots, and as much as I don't like the New England Patriots, you have to give them credit for winning despite all the distractions, and the St. Louis Cardinals right now are still doing that. But it's a long baseball season, and the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, the thing that I think will probably irritate a lot of people as well is the way that they do it. And I'm not talking about the behind-the-scenes potential hacking and all of that stuff. I'm still hoping that that's a lower-level thing, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the thing that I think a lot of people are probably tired of the St. Louis Cardinals with is that they, they still manage to win games regardless of who is in the lineup. Right now they're they're missing basically two out of their three top pitchers depending on how you want to order them. Uh, other people have stepped up and everything, but two of the top three pitchers for the St. Louis Cardinals are Adam Wainwright and Lance Lynn. Both of them are not playing right now. Lance Lynn should be back before the All-Star break if you want to believe what the team has to say about that. Even if he is not, the St. Louis Cardinals are still uh, positioning themselves to be in a relatively good position. Even if they fall back a few games, uh, right now they're still in a comfortable enough position to once you get people healthy, then you can make that extra push towards the playoffs. Right now the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, in terms of the National League Central, are 43-23 as its head best record in the league. Four games behind them are Pittsburgh. Seven games behind the Cardinals are the Chicago Cubs. Cincinnati's 12.5 back, Milwaukee's 20 back. The, those two teams are probably completely out of it. But for the St. Louis Cardinals, they're one of those teams that if you love them, you, you have to applaud them. You, you sit there and sing their praises. Uh, if you hate them, you can't stand the fact that they never seem to fall off the, the charts uh, other than uh, a few bad periods in the 90s. The St. Louis Cardinals have always been up there. And the, the past few years, they've managed to do it. They're the anti-St. Louis Blues, and I say that a bit tongue-in-cheek, tongue simply because the St. Louis Blues seem to never be able to overcome injuries. Uh, it always happens at the worst possible time. It happens to key players, uh, and the team just isn't able to overcome it. The St. Louis Cardinals seem to be the antithesis of that. They have key injuries, but they happen either at good times during the season to where you can get that player back at an opportune time and run into the playoffs with a bunch of steam, or they simply overcome it as they have been so far with Adam Wainwright. They've done it before. They went to a World Series and won without Adam Wainwright. I'm not saying they're going to do the same again, but again, it just speaks, regardless of what you feel about the current situation with the hacking and everything, that cannot be condoned. Heads have to roll somewhere in the organization for that. 
but in terms of an organization that has just done things in terms of promoting a good culture within the locker room. I'm not sure what's going on in the front office, but within the locker room, that team has really solidified itself as one of the best in terms of mental strength. They don't let all the outside distractions get to them, and that is the true sign of a champion, even though they haven't won since 2011. That is the view from the Midwest. What are your views on today's topics? Comment, rate, and subscribe on YouTube. If you're uh, watching on Facebook, share it around. Never mind my little cell phone ding there. And uh, we'll keep these on rolling for you. But until the next time, I'll see you then.